Okay, uh, let's continue with the first Python lesson of this automating GIS processes course. I hope you can still see my screen. Uh, so we will we are now continuing under lesson one, shapely and geometric objects, uh, which contains the first first lesson for this course. Uh, so for the Helsinki University students and students in the Finnish uh, higher education institutes who have access to CSC, I recommend using the CSC notebooks. Mm, for others, as there are also others watching this lesson later on online, so you can uh, interact with the lesson contents going by uh, launching this binder from here, or then you can live code on the web page uh, by launching the TB lab uh, application. So it will then make these code cells code cells on the page interactive and you, you can modify the code and so on. So you can follow, follow along follow along and code along. Um, okay, and then still one word before I start. So in the CSC notebooks environment, we have this kind of empty notebook. So you need to code uh, things in. But then all the all the correct syntax and code can be then found from these web pages if you uh, if you if I'm going too fast or if you were not listening at some point. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, and for me to know that you are actually still there and following, I would like you to let's test these uh, green little check mark buttons. Uh, if you open the participants list in Zoom, you should see this uh, yes and no buttons. So please click on the yes button if you were able to launch CSC notebooks and you were able to find this lesson notebook. So then I get a rough idea of how many of you are actually coding along uh, and following following while I'm doing, doing the things. And if you have any trouble, you can click on the red X. So this is now the point to draw my attention or if Emil is here, he can maybe also help with technicalities. Okay, I think most of you found the green button and it shows that we are all on the same page, ready to, ready to go. Okay, I'll hide this um, file browser for now as we are not interacting with any data. Maybe furthermore, I will put this to full screen to maximize it. All right, so uh, let's dive into the first topic that is kind of forms the basis for working with uh, vector data, uh, geographic information in vector format in Python. Uh, so you will learn how to create and manipulate geometries uh, using a pa package called Shapely. Uh, and what do we mean by geometric objects? So they are the basic building blocks of uh, representing uh, geographic information in a GIS uh, system. Mm, so we have points. Uh, lines and polygons. And if we think about representing geography or the real world on a computer, so a point could be, well, a point of interest, some location, or let's say a trash bin could be represented as a point, or even sometimes place names are just attached to a point for technical reasons, so different locations, or then points can be events, so it can have a temporal dimension. You can have GPS points that represent the movement of, um, uh, of a car or a person or a mobile phone. Why not? Then lines or line strings. So there's multiple nodes and then lines connecting those. So they could be, well, obviously roads or some trajectories or uh, power lines we can represent using lines. Um, and then polygons can think of many, many uh, examples, buildings, country borders, 
even rivers might be represented as a polygon instead of a line string. Um, so, and, and so on. So when we are working with GIS data uh, in vector format, so we will be having some kinds of points, lines, or polygons uh, that we're working with. All right. Uh, and then when we start working with GeoPandas, uh, you are already familiar with pandas. So we have some tabular data, panel data with uh, rows and columns. So if you really put it in a simple way, then GeoPandas adds one column, which has the geometries as shapely objects. So today we will learn how to manage these shapely objects. And then next week, we will uh, continue working with GeoPandas uh, and apply, apply this understanding there. Uh, and then there's also a bit more complicated uh, collections of geometry, such as multipoints, multiline strings, and so on, uh, that we will be also looking at briefly. Mm. OK, uh, and then in Shapely, basically, you can, we can create these objects. And then there are some basic operations, such as combining the objects using union, calculating distances, and so on, uh, looking at the topology if two items touch uh, or cross each other or intersect, and so on. So this basic overlay uh, terminology from also GIS, GIS software. Uh, good reference is Shapely documentation in here. So I hope you will spend some time reading this page uh, while working on the exercise. Uh, so all of these tools that we are using today are documented. Documented then here, and I think we'll be jumping a bit back and forth of, uh, of this Shapely documentation and our course pages. And for example, here, there's the point object. So it's a class uh, in Python. And we can construct it by uh, passing a point tuple, so a coordinate pair. Uh, to put it simple, I'm having trouble with my full screen, full screen tabs. I'll jump back from there. Okay. Uh, and finally, what is a tuple? I think we came across this data type in the first teaching period, but if we didn't, it's basically a data structure uh, that. Uh, has some number of values uh, stored in it, separated by commas. When we have a coordinate pair, we have two uh, values or three values if it's a three-dimensional uh, space. Mm, and then what's the difference between tuple and a list, for example? So a list object we can change. We can take out values, or we can add or change the values in a list. But a tuple, once you create it, you can't modify it anymore. So it's immutable uh, uh, versus when actually we can mutate lists. All right. So with that, we are ready to start uh, hands on. And of course, as we now have a new module, we need to import it. So we'll be uh, using uh, Shapely, but we don't want to import shapely with all of its tools and classes. Uh, we will be now just familiarizing ourselves with the basic geometry uh, data types so we can in import those directly. So from shapely geometry import mm, point. So this will import uh, that uh, point constructor for the point class that we just were reading the documentation about. Mm, and only that. At the same time, uh, to keep things organized, let's also import line string uh, and polygon. And pay attention that these have capital first letters because they refer to these uh, kind of object classes. Uh, and not functions as, as such. 
uh, when you type that in, you can actually control uh, enter run the cell or run it from up here. So those of you who are new to this course, we are using uh, a file type called Jupyter Lab uh, file extension IPYNB. Uh, and we have these markdown cells that you can also edit. Uh, and then we have these executable code cells and you can verify the type of the cell from uh, the top of the file. Okay, if that worked, mm, we can actually start creating points. And to save some time, we have some lines already filled in, but let's create point number one. So I'm uh, writing in the variable name where we want to store it, and then let's give it a value. So then we are using this point uh, constructor, and it takes at least two values uh, as input, as we saw from the documentation. Uh, and if we are using the same values as in the lesson materials, you can type in two coordinates, separate it by a comma. Mm. Here, actually, syntax-wise, you could have extra parentheses around, but with only these, uh, with such a simple um, constructor, we can leave the inner uh, par uh, parentheses of the tuple out. You can again run the cell to see that you don't have any syntax errors. So now we defined a point, a shapely point, uh, which is in memory in this uh, point one variable. Let's create another point, uh, point 3D, to show an example using the same uh, same syntax. Uh, I'm now copy pasting those coordinates from point three and then adding the third dimension. So at latest at this point, if you're not familiar with the control C, control V, copy paste command. So those that is actually the most useful tool to use when uh, writing code and recycling code. So now we have added this point number one and point 3D uh, there. I run the cell again to have all the variables in the memory uh, so we can then start exploring what we actually did. So if I just type in point one, mm, Python is actually able to render it as a point. So it recognizes that it's a shape object. Uh, and visualizes it in here. Uh, but of course, if we want to actually see what the what is the definition of that point, then we can use the print statement, for example, point one. Uh, and it will print out uh, point and then the then the coordinates that we passed. Okay, I'll now move forward. Indeed, if you need to check some syntax or values, you can check them from the web page or then ask in Slack if I went, didn't mention something or if I went too quickly, or if you want me to scroll up again. Uh, let's also check this point 3D. Uh, and we see it again here. Uh, this Z letter says that it's actually a three-dimensional point. So this uh, kind of mm, format of the printout that we see is then, is then based on this uh, format from Geos, and you can read more about it in there. So it's a standard way of representing uh, coordinates as text. One point about these points is that, of course, well, we are passing uh, these kind of, in a way, decimal degree values, but these are these are yet still some just some abstract coordinates. We are not yet in any coordinate reference system because we haven't defined one. These are just x y coordinates in some flat uh, Cartesian coordinate system uh, before we actually then 
define otherwise. So at this point, for example, somebody was asking that what GIS stuff should you be aware of? So for example, at this point, we could have a discussion about the difference between geographic coordinate systems. So are we working with uh, decimal degrees that describe the position on a sphere or on the globe, on a ball? Or then are we using projected coordinates that are actually uh, according to some projected coordinate reference system on a flat surface? So these sorts of questions we'll be discussing then later on when actually putting these coordinates into some coordinate reference system. But still, at this point, super simple. We have some points now uh, in memory. Mm. Then, then uh, we have this point object. Uh, okay, yep, sorry. This was supposed to go there. And my next point would have been about the data type of the point. So there was a slot for checking that in here. We know how to check data types of variables using the type function in Python. Uh, and if we check uh, point one, so it's shapely geometry point dot point uh, as the data type. And then this data type has its own attributes and methods related to it, such as then uh, if we move forward, this uh, point has information about it about its own geometry type. So if we type in point one dot geom type, oops. So note here here again we don't put the parentheses because it's an attribute. It's not a method. It's a feature of this uh, object. Uh, so the geometry type is point. So this geometry type and then the data type of the variable, they're slightly two different things. So this is kind of just a Python data type. And then this geometry type is this shapely specific uh, type of the geometry object. Mm -hmm. mm. Then now that we put in some coordinates, we can also then get coordinates out of a shapely object. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways. We'll start by uh, using this chords uh, attribute. So we can type in point one chords, let's say what that gives us. So it gives us some kind of weird coordinate sequence object. Uh, but actually, if we from that uh, put that one inside a list, so then uh, Python is able to uh, represent the actual coordinates. So this syntax puts, puts inside the list uh, the coordinate sequence. So the coordinate tuple or tuples that are related to this object. Mm -hmm. With the point, it's, it's maybe quite self-evident, but this is quite mm -hmm. useful then with more complicated uh, shapes. Okay, so this is just a syntax uh, you need to know. Know from the documentation uh, then, uh, for some reasons, we might want to get X and Y uh, coordinates uh, separately. So that is also possible. We can do point X. Uh, I'll put it into a print statement. So I can then also print point Y. Oops, point one Y. So these are now just floating point values that I could then uh, do some other uh, calculations on if I if I would want to. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's quite clear. We have a point object. It has some attributes that can then uh, give us information about the contents of the variable. Mm. Okay. Uh, then. What we can then actually do uh, to analyze analyze these points. So you remember we defined these points one, two, and three, four already that we have in memory. So let's just check what we have. Point one. Oh, I'm getting tired. Print 
point one and then print point two. This is just to check what uh, data data we are actually working with. So we have two points. Uh, and then there is a function for calculating distances between points in Shapely. So this will be then useful later on uh, when we're calculating, for example, some nearest neighbor uh, points. Uh, and the po point here is that uh, the tool, tool comes from Shapely. So we can then call it like this, we have object and then it's the method related to that object. And then as parameter, we give the other object uh, like that. So this is now again, a reminder just in some arbitrary units, the distance. If we would be calculating distances with real geographic data, we should have it in a projected coordinate system. Uh, here's some instructions of pr printing out a nicely formatted info message. I guess we can do that. So now I store the same results into a variable. And then if I want to make a nice print statement, we can recap some of these uh, string formatting. Mm. Yes. And then glitch. So actually, I don't know if we have went through this type of string formatting, maybe when we were formatting. Yes, we have. When we were writing data to a file. So if you have some, some piece of text, a string object, and then format, and then using these curly brackets, you indicate the place uh, where to put the thing. If I would just do like this, uh, that I put the dist in there, uh, I can get then uh, Python formats it so that it puts whatever variable is in here. Doesn't even need to be a string variable. It will format it as a string and replace this curly bracket piece with that thing. But of course, if we want to then format it nicely, then there's this kind of decimal formatting. Uh, oops. Syntax. So I, I tell that I want two decimal points uh, to be included, and then I can get a nice, uh, nice output. This was kind of a side side track from the course contents, but a nice, nice trick how to uh, know how to do if you're then automating some process that has some print print out so you can have some variable going in and if it's a decimal uh, floating point value you can then also format the decimal points. Okay, so, mm, moving on uh, then we have the line string so at least two points is needed to draw a line right. Uh, let's again look at the documentation maybe I'll just leave this not in the full screen mode. Mm. So line strings in Shapely, uh, again, you see the information in here. So takes an ordered sequence of two or more point tuples. Mm -hmm. So, and from here, you can see that you could also have a three dimensional point. We'll be making lines with two dimensional points. And what does this mean? So ordered sequence, basically a list of tuples. So we need a list of coordinate pairs uh, inside our line string constructor. So let's create a line variable. Uh, and then we have the line string constructor uh, parentheses for that. And inside there, we wanted the list of uh, point tuples. And in this case, actually, you can see the correct syntax already in the cell below as it's as it's in there. But uh, in this case, we have the three points, point, point one, point two, point uh, three. So we can actually pass those point two, point three as a list 
to the line string constructor. So if you happen to have shapely points somewhere, you can just put them inside a list, give them to the line string constructor uh, to create a shapely line string. This should work. Uh, the same, same thing can be done like this. So this was point one, point two, point three. They should be the same coordinates than uh, we defined. Uh, and this way, line and line two should be identical. So either of these uh, syntax work. But of course, like if you already have the points in there, uh, there's no point in uh, fetching the coordinates, putting inside a tuple and passing it. Uh, to the constructor, right? Um, okay, so that's quite logical. You can imagine that you can then have 10, 10 points inside the same list. Now we are, only have three. Let's see how this line looks like with the three points um, line. Okay, so line, line one, line two, line three, I assume. Uh, and then again, we can print line uh, you see this line string uh, formatted text output in there then the same stuff type line uh, again if i went too fast please tell me in the in the chat or then uh, you can check the syntax from the web pages uh, so it is a shapely line string and then line uh, what was it? Geom type. The geometry type is line string. Um, okay. Uh, line strings. Uh, they have the same uh, line dot chords uh, attribute, and if we put that inside a list. We can actually see the coordinates. So now we have here basically the same reverse, the same uh, thing that we put as input input in there. Uh, so if, if needed, you can fetch the coordinates quite nicely using the chords, uh, putting it inside a list. Same thing that we did before. And then again, now um, actually it gets a bit more complicated, I think. I haven't tried, but if I would do, if I want to get the x and y coordinates, so this will now give me an error. You remember we could do point one dot x. That's logical. Point has only one x value, but line dot x uh, doesn't give me anything. But there's line dot x y that gives me an output, uh, and this now it looks a bit cryptic, but it's actually I have some NumPy arrays in a tuple, I guess. So I have first object and the second object. And if I start breaking this down, I could uh, x, y. So this should be the x coordinates. Seems true. So then if I use, you remember tuples are like lists, but unchangeable. So I can access the first item in the tuple using indices. So it looks already nicer uh, as we haven't been, I think this is a NumPy array, I can confirm it like this, uh, well, array. Uh, so we can then put the contents of that array into a list that we are more familiar with like this. So those would be the X values. Uh, and then the same thing, just copy that, uh, the y values. And I guess here the point was to put them inside the variables that are printed out in the next code cell. Uh, like this. So, x chords, b chords. OK. So I hope this is somewhat clear. You will be needing this uh, kind of, you have some index or panda series or array, and then you want to get the first value or the second value. So the concept of index values is important to understand. If you need a recap, we have materials in GeoPython course week two, I think. 
or even one quick one yes uh yepsis so this is how you can get list of x coordinates and y coordinates for whatever purpose out of a shapely line string uh, some functions related to line strings with the point we have the distance with the line we can take the length well that's an attribute uh, line dot len uh, that's it uh, so it's again in these uh, whatever units we have uh, so it has calcul calculated the length from there to there to there and maybe in the interest of time i won't be printing out the nicely formatted output uh, which is can be found in the lesson materials instead uh, proceed here so line dot centroid which is maybe a bit uh, interesting so then well also polygons but also lines then have information about the centroid which then again is a shapely point mm, yeah so if you would then print this out uh, like this you see that it's it's we have come back uh, to a shapely point that's somewhere maybe in the middle of this weird line. All right. Okay, then we have polygons uh, getting more complicated. Uh, so let's again go to shapely manual to see what we need to create polygons. So this looks already a bit longer. A polygon constructor takes two positional parameters. The first is an ordered sequence of x, y, z uh, point tuples. Uh, then, then, then. And then there's a reference to another constructor. And then there's an optional uh, parameter for some, if we want to make a hole in our uh, polygon like this. But let's start with the kind of basic basic polygon so indeed the second the whole parameter is optional so we can just use the basic polygon constructor to create uh, a polygon a solid polygon so let's see how to do that mm, i have there uh some coordinates so these are the same points that we have been using but for your convenience you can again uh, copy them from there to save us some time typing, control C. Uh, so I have those now on the clipboard and let's create a poly uh, variable for a polygon and then capital P polygon or the shapely polygon. And then I pasted uh, the tuples. I think this will now give an error, yes. So, I need to put those coordinates inside a list. Okay. So now I didn't get any error. Uh, I will actually just type in poly in here to see that now I have created a polygon based on these coordinates that we already saw. Mm. what did we do we had this uh, ordered sequence of point tuples so ordered sequence means a list where the order matters basically uh, so we have a list of coordinate tuples in here in this case we have three points for the polygon mm, and we have created it uh, that's great uh, then of course it's often the case again that you might have these points might exist so you might have shapely points or something else and you want to create the polygon based on those so let's try that uh, i will do now a variable called poly2 equals uh, poly uh, Okay, so a warning, this is a bit complicated. I'll try to explain it well. And here I would appreciate if you have any questions, so please ask. Uh, so now let's try first like ordered sequence of points. 
can we do point point one point two point three so this would be the same logic that we used when creating the line string we had a list of points and it was able to draw us the line so let's see what this gives us uh well actually it works let's see mm -hmm. well this is interesting because if this now works then i don't need to go through the um complicated uh list comprehension that we had on the web pages that's maybe a good thing I think last year the syntax was so that this wouldn't have worked, which was now a nice demo effect that it actually worked. Uh, I could, hmm. Okay, so let's remember that you can actually now pass a list of points. That is great. Uh, if you would go to the lesson materials, mm, you will see a bit more complicated syntax, and I can, of course, explain it here rather briefly. So one other way of passing uh, a list of x, y tuples to the constructor would be to use a list comprehension, which is now, as we saw, useless, but I'll explain it anyway. Uh, just for the fun of it. So if here the goal would be instead of passing these points would be to get x and y uh, point for each of these points and put those x y coordinate pairs into a list. And how to do that? Uh, you can do it uh, using a list comprehension. So it's kind of a one liner for loop, which then goes through the items uh, in this list and then takes something out of there. Uh, so basically, I would start reading it from here. So for a point in this list of points, mm, do something. And in this list comprehension syntax, the output is actually uh, placed before the for loop definition. And for each point, what do we want? We want point x uh, and then point y. Uh, and this would produce the same output. Maybe to explain this uh, one more time, so I take only this list comprehension in here. So in case there would be some reason for fetching a kind of a list of coordinate, list of coordinate uh, tuples or pairs, you can actually make them tuples like this uh, from a set of points. So then this kind of uh, syntax would work. So for uh, item in this list, take uh, item.x and item.y and then do it for all of these items in the list and put them inside a list. That's my best explanation of list comprehensions. And eventually, then this was the output that was then in this case passed to the polygon constructor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so list comprehensions that's useful for this case. Actually, we were now able to do pass the list of shapely points. I think the shapely syntax has changed since last year's lesson. Um, so if you have any questions about list comprehensions, I'm happy to answer, but we can also be happy that we don't maybe need them now when uh, even in the exercise uh, last year, I think we had to do it using this list comprehension approach. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I see only silence in the chat, so I'll proceed a bit. There's one check your understanding coming up in a bit. Mm, so that was for the list comprehension. Uh, so we continue here. I had this first polygon and then the second polygon that was done using the shapely points. So they are identical. Again, there was two different approaches. Depending on where you get the input, you might use one or the other uh, for doing the polygon. Uh, 
And again, here's slots for once more visualizing and seeing the definition of the polygon. So in this case, we have this uh, polygon with the list of corner coordinates uh, inside in there with that formatting. Okay. Uh, yep. So continuing with the polygon, there's nothing new. We can check the data type poly. That's a shaped polygon. Geometry type is um, poly dot geom type polygon. And if you want to know everything you can do with polygons, you can either run help and then this polygon uh, object, or then indeed go to this shapely user manual that I've been showing here during this lesson. Uh, e yep. So indeed, you can also then add, add holes in there. And we actually have, have an example of that uh, in the later part, which starts in here. Uh, so if we would want to create a polygon with a hole, uh, that's possible. And this also helps us understand a bit further the kind of how this polygon constructor works. So this code cell should be filled in uh, readily for you in order to save a bit of time typing things in. So we have here an outer border that basically covers the whole world if we would imagine that these were uh, coordinates in VGS84 uh, system. But now it's just some random uh, rectangle. Mm. So we here we have a list of coordinate tuples. Sounds like we can uh, create a polygon out of those. And we might as well call it world. 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 Yes, that's correct. Uh, polygon. And now that we have the required uh, list of coordinate tuples in the variable, we can just pass the variable uh, there. And if you want to check it out, you can just type in world. So then Jupyter Notebook will draw the shape. Mm, OK. Actually, maybe there was the slot for that. Uh, and then we can add a whole uh, kind of inner inner part that will, won't be part of the polygon in there. So this one has kind of, uh, is it 10 degrees or yes, 10, 10, 10 units uh, smaller on each side than the border. Mm. And now then if we want to create uh, a polygon using these two definition of uh, corner coordinates, we can call it a frame and then start creating the polygon. So now there were these two parameters. Let's check what they were from here. So there's the shell is the first one uh, uh, compulsory and then holes is the second optional parameter. So then we pass, mm, Oops, not world, that was the polygon, but we want to pass the border coordinates and then we pass as the whole holes is the argument name. So then we pass this whole uh, variable which contains this list of uh, list of tuples. <laughs> okay, let's see what happened. Uh, so now we created something with an outer border and then inner border and then this green part is part of the polygon and then the interior is not. Mm. We can of course also, maybe I'll just, I'm adding these code cells every now and then from this plus sign. Sorry if that's confusing. So frame, if we check the definition, so here we have now the outer uh, shell is the first set of coordinates and then the inner one is this one. And you can imagine if it was more complicated shape then the polygon definition would be even more complicated. 
All right. Mm, so this, well, I don't know if this will be useful during the course, but at least you know that it's possible to create a hole inside a polygon uh, using Shapely. There's then this final, final code block. There's some readily filled in text. Um, just to wrap up with the polygon stuff. So polygon has various attributes. We can check uh, trouble typing and speaking at the same time. World dot centroid. So we can print the centroid coordinates. Area. Uh, exterior. And then length of the exterior, so basically the length of the outer border. Length. Let's see if I made typos. Probably did. Yes. When I was coding in R, I think in R the you don't have the len, but you have the length uh, function for checking the length of something. And I always was mistyping it as len. <laughs> Uh, so there we go. And this is now just something to know how these things are written. But these uh, attributes are then available when we will have a GeoPandas data frame with the geometry column. So then these attributes, for example, area or length or bounds and so on and so forth, will be available uh, if you apply these. Uh, these uh, attribute calls on this geo series, so the geometry column. So it's good to know that what you can do with the geometries in GeoPandas basically comes from Shapely and Shapely functionality. So sometimes you need to go to this Shapely manual to know what to do in GeoPandas with your geometries. So I guess that's one of the main take home messages in here for the further lessons. Okay, um, yeah, so we're almost there uh, and almost on time as well. I've been talking for two hours now, so I hope you are not bored and I hope you're still excited about automating GIS processes in Python. Today, indeed, we are only focusing on these very basic, well, geometric shapes, which then eventually are the building blocks for rep representing geographic information in vector format on the computer. Uh, so this is really useful stuff. Um, but at this point, I would like to give you maybe, let's say, seven minutes at least to stop and think. So this, I think, hope this was quite straightforward. It's uh, well documented. Uh, and so on. But just to check that you are following the logic, I would ask you to create some shapes uh, now. So I have a list of suggested shapes. There's the pentagon, uh, triangle, square, and circle. Circle might be a bit tricky, but if you Google around or read the documentation, you might figure it out. Uh, so let's spend a moment uh, when you would be solving these problems. I'll wipe the green check marks. Uh, so once you're done, please check the green check mark. And I will then show these solutions maybe in, let's say, five, five minutes. So you can, if you need a glass of water or some snack, you can also get it the same time. So yeah, so have fun. Uh, I'll start talking again in five minutes or so. So what is it then? 20, 25 past. Uh, I'll start going through the solutions. So after this, we don't have much, much to cover in the common lesson. And then I'll wrap up with explaining the first exercise.
Okay. How's it going? I see a couple of green check marks. I would guess that maybe most of you did the first three, but circle might be more tricky. Mm, I'll start going th these through so that we can then finish soonish and get started with the actual exercise. But I hope this got you thinking a bit about the syntax on your own. Uh, so first task was the Pentagon. I actually started this by looking at the real coordinates of the Pentagon in the United States, but then I was thinking that that's maybe not a good, good idea to Google that, but I found, found these example coordinates online to draw a Pentagon. Um, I can basically just uh, write the definition in here and the output will be printed on the screen. So the polygon constructor takes an ordered sequence of coordinate tuples. So I need the list and then I can put these coordinates in there and see what happens. Uh, okay, so we have a nice uh, pentagon in there. One, two, three, four, five uh, corners, symmetrical. Uh, then the next question was a triangle. So three corners. Uh, I could of course do that by modifying the pentagon, just taking out uh, some of those corners, but maybe if I would think from the scratch. So again, I have polygon, polygon, then list of coordinate tuples, and we could start from zero. That's easy to understand, or you could even draw this on a kind of crossed what is it, through to paper, cross the paper. So we can start from zero. Then if we think we can go on the X axis, for example, four units. So that would be X is four and Y is still zero. Uh, and I'm getting, there we go. Uh, that would be the, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the first point will be zero zero, right? X is zero and Y is zero. Then the second one is that X is four and Y is zero. And then the third one could be if we make it kind of even. So then the third one could be that X is uh, two and then Y is four. Okay. And then I have some ah, syntax error in there and it needs to be a list of tuples. So I have a list and then three tuples now it should work. There we go. Okay, that's a triangle. Um, if I would want to modify it, I could, for example, have the central central coordinate. Uh, so the x axis in two, so I would have this 90 degree angle and so on. Uh, so the order, order matters. Uh, so it's an ordered sequence of coordinate tuples. But I hope you got the idea. Uh, then we had a square. So maybe I'll cheat and take these coordinates and modify. So we can have zero, then we can have four, then we could go up. So to four and four, and then we need the fourth coordinate uh, where X is zero and then Y is four. Okay, so first corner, second corner on the x-axis, third corner, y is four, x is four, and then uh, back back to the uh, line where x is zero, and then uh, we have the corner coordinate in there. Okay, then the final one, which was maybe a bit of a trick question, if you googled it, uh, shape the operates on points, lines, and polygons, there's not a circle, but if we have a point, uh, let's create a point at uh, zero. Uh, there we go. And then if we buffer it, for example, with one, so then we can represent a circle. So, uh, yeah, so apparently some of you got this. This is maybe it was a bit trick question, but we will indeed be buffering uh, coordinates in our uh, GIS layers using 
the buffer method, which then comes from Shapley. Okay, uh, that was the main contents of this lesson. Uh, the notebook, co notebook continues with geometry collections. Uh, so this is mostly for self-study. We will use multi-point objects at some later course, but these are, it continues the same logic of shapely objects. So we can import the constructors, maybe still to recap. So if, when would we have these multi objects, you can think of it as like, if you open an attribute table of a GIS file in QGIS, let's say, and you have one row of attributes. So it could be country name and population and some other non-spatial attributes. And then you have the geometries related to those attributes. So if it's, for example, a country that's composed of multiple islands, or let's say the Orland archipelago or whatever. So then you could have, you would have this like one line of attributes and then a multi-polygon representing the geometries. So these sorts of examples, uh, in this example, you, you might have a multi-polygon object then actually. Uh, in memory. Uh, just to show uh, you can read the syntax more closely, but there we have created a multi-point, which is one object that contains three contains three points. Uh, multi-line, I think this is it has two lines, and then it's a multi-line object. Uh, and then this example script creates two polygons. Uh, there's actually some other useful stuff, but I'll maybe just skip it. So this object in here, it has two polygons uh, defined uh, and then in one multi-polygon object. Okay, so I'm intentionally going browsing through this quite quickly. I'll just scroll back and show one other useful way of constructing polygons. So it's the box, box uh, constructor in Shapely or box method. So you can actually also, if you're just having these rectangular objects, you can pass the mi minimum uh, minimum uh, x, y, and maximum x, y uh, using this kind of syntax. So that might be sometimes useful, but not directly linked to this week's exercise. Uh, furthermore, then there's these two methods. So if we have a multi-point object, for example, uh, there's a method or an approach called the convex hull, which draws the smallest possible polygon around the points, which is a bit similar, but a bit different from the bound, kind of minimum bounding box. So the envelope, which is then the smallest rectangular polygon around some geometry. So these two uh, methods or attributes, I don't know, uh, might come in handy. If, if you want to extract information from more complicated uh, shapes. Uh, that's it. And then again, from these multi-polygons, you can get different kinds of attributes, attributes out using shapely tools. But yeah, so you can check this uh, last part of the lesson notebook on your own time if you're interested in the details. Excellent. So um, do you have some questions? At this point, after now, you were thinking about creating polygons on your own mm -hmm. related to the lesson. Uh, if not, we can then have a look at the exercise. Uh, 